Hey, this is Joe with Grow It Build It. Today I'm going to show you how to compost in winter, a complete tutorial. Making compost is often thought of as a warm season garden activity. Images of steaming hot piles built with fresh greens come to mind, and finished piles with their beautiful crumbly earthly finished compost for top dressing the lawn or garden look absolutely beautiful, well, to a gardener anyways. The microbes that make all that beautiful compost, they work best in warm or hot temperatures. And like you may have learned in school or from experience, when those temperatures drop to freezing cold, the microbes and bacteria slow down or stop altogether. And in the winter, as a gardener, you have two options. You can either surrender your pile to the elements and just keep adding kitchen scraps with no turning, knowing that come spring you'll have a lot of material you can use. Or you can work to keep the piles going throughout winter and have finished compost ready for spring. In fact, even after watching this video, if you don't want to work on active piles, you should still accumulate your kitchen scraps over the winter. Just keep them in a large trash can or buckets with lids, because that is valuable green material and it's just going to freeze up and be stable all winter, and it's better to keep that for compost rather than add it to the landfill. But in winter, I generally build and finish two piles before spring, from October, November through March to April. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what principles you need to follow to do the same. I'm in zone 6 in Pennsylvania, and while it certainly isn't the coldest part of North America, not by a long shot, it does go well below freezing and stays there for extended periods. So even if you live in the Dakotas or Saskatchewan, hopefully you can take some of the information I present in this video and find it useful in your own situation, you know, if nothing else. But in this video, we're going to cover the following. A brief review of compost and its ingredients, why is it harder to compost in winter, and what do we need to do different in winter to maintain an active pile. Then we'll review and at the end I'm going to have a little appendix, well a long appendix, that's going to be documentation of the two piles I built and finished this past winter. Filming every interaction I had with the pile, temperatures, ingredients, all of that. Also there will be a digital table of contents below so if you want to jump to very specific sections you can do so there. So I hope you guys stick with me and let's learn how to make compost in the snow. Okay, so compost is the byproduct, final, and stable form of decomposed organic matter. It's full of nutrients, beneficial microorganisms, and is extremely fertile. A wonderful soil amendment for any garden, flower bed, or lawn. It can be spread on top as top dressed. It can be tilled in or mixed in when backfilling. It's just wonderful stuff. Now composting is the process we do to make organic matter decompose much faster into compost. And in a nutshell, to make compost you need four ingredients. You need nitrogen rich materials, collectively known as greens, such as kitchen scraps, grass clippings, fresh yard waste, that kind of stuff. Materials that are rich in carbon, collectively known as brown materials, such as shredded cardboard, paper, sawdust, leaves. Water and air. You need water because the materials need to be moist for the bacteria to work and air. The heat generating bacteria breaking down the material needs oxygen. And if you have all four of those ingredients, you can make hot compost. Also, if you are somewhat new to composting, I will put a link to a list I compiled of over 100 different materials that you can find around your home that can be composted. And it lists them and whether they're green and brown and all that. So there'll be a link to that below. All right, so why is it harder to compost in the winter? Well, there's two primary reasons for that. The first being the outdoor temperature decreasing. The colder it is outside, the faster the heat from the center of our pile will escape to the environment, thereby lowering the temperature of the center of our pile. And as previously mentioned, as this temperature decreases, the bacteria activity decreases. And since they're generating the heat, the temperature will decrease further. So we have a negative feedback loop. In that colder outdoor temperatures lower the temperature in the center of the pile, which decreases the activity of our heat generating bacteria, which lowers the temperature of our pile further, and uh, it's not good. It's a bad situation when you're trying to decompose material. The second reason we have problems composting in winter is that one of the most plentiful sources of green materials is missing, which is yard waste or grass clippings. In winter, we aren't mowing yards, so obviously we don't have them. So we need to seek out some alternatives. Okay, so what do we actually need to do differently in winter? Well, there are four principles I've found to building and maintaining a winter compost pile. If you follow these, you should be able to have a hot active compost pile and have plenty of compost ready for spring. I'll mention them briefly here and we'll go through them in a little more detail. But number one, we're gonna make our piles bigger. Two, 
we're going to use alternative green materials and be aggressive in accumulating them. Three, we're going to add fresh green and maybe brown material to our pile each time we turn it. We have to keep feeding it. And three, do not turn your pile more than once per week. Okay, so if you guys have been enjoying this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up. It really helps me out and I really, really do appreciate it. Also, this entire video does exist in an article on our website. Actually, the article contains a lot more information than I'm even sharing in this video. I just didn't want to make the video too long. So I'll link to that below. You should go there and check it out for a quick reference later. But okay, let's have a closer look at the principles of winter composting. Number one, making our piles bigger. During spring and summer, I can make a very hot pile that is about three foot diameter. But in winter, I have found I need to increase the diameter and height from three to four feet to four and a half to six foot uh, diameter. The limiting factor here is your ability to reach the center of the pile to mix it. But the main principle at work here is larger piles are better insulated from the elements. So it reduces the amount of heat loss from the center and you, you have to have a big pile to be able to maintain that temperature in the middle. Number two, alternative green materials. So while we don't have access to green grass clippings or fresh yard waste, we have to start using some alternatives. Number one, kitchen scraps. So even though we have kitchen scraps all year, during the winter, I will basically stockpile them in five gallon buckets with lids. I store those in my unheated garage or back porch. This allows me to accumulate a significant volume of green material for composting and in the cold garage or outside, it really isn't decomposing, it's stable. So it doesn't smell bad and it just kind of sits there until I'm ready to use it. Next, pumpkins or used jack-o'-lanterns. One of the unsung heroes of winter composting is all of that fall decor that people throw out. Pumpkins, gourds, Halloween jack-o'-lanterns are an amazing source of green compost material and they're readily available from November through December. I put the word out in my neighborhood that I want all their used pumpkins and people just text me or let me know when they're done. I'll go get them on my wheelbarrow and that's it. But seriously, these fleshy squashes break down lightning quick and they generate a ton of heat. You absolutely need to make use of these. Next is coffee grounds from Starbucks. We've all heard about getting used coffee grounds from coffee shops, and over the years I've found that the only reliable place to actually do this is Starbucks. They have a national program in place to make them available to the public. Just go to a Starbucks and ask. They usually have a bucket by the door with large silver bags filled with old grounds. In fact, I've built hot piles in other times of the year just using 10 bags of these as my primary ingredient. So find some local Starbucks and stockpile them whenever you can. One other green material that I need to mention is manure. It, I'm not going to go into detail about it because I do not use it. I have no animals and I don't want to fill my car with poop. But know that if you do use it, you will need to account for any pathogens that could be present. That will involve hitting certain temperature requirements or applying your compost early enough. See the USDA website for more details on this. The last alternative green material I need to mention is urine. Although it's not one that we maybe want to talk about out loud in public, it is a green material. It's mainly composed of water, but there is a lot of nitrogen inside of it. So if you're in a pinch, you can use it as a green material for your pile. Just get a container and fill it up before you go turn your pile. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the third principle of winter composting, and that is to recharge the pile when you turn it, AKA you're adding greens every time you turn it. Um, if we have an active pile, as it decomposes, the material is going to compress on itself and that's gonna squeeze out oxygen. You know, we don't want the oxygen to go away as previously mentioned because the non-heat generating bacteria will take over. So we turn the pile to counteract that. That reintroduces air into the mix so that the heat generating bacteria can become dominant again. In a normal summer pile, this will cause the temperature to rise substantially. But in winter, I've found that I need to add more greens when I do this, at least some, to refuel my pile. This will have the effect of recharging the pile, allowing it to maintain or increase its internal temperature. The last principle is the turning frequency. For turning our pile, we do not want to do this more than once per week, really once every seven to 14 days. So at, wait at least seven days, and then the other limiting factor should be when you've accumulated sufficient kitchen scraps or coffee grounds um, to add. So for me, I, I like to have at least five gallons of kitchen scraps or an equivalent coffee ground volume to add when I go to turn my pile. 
the reason why we do this is because when we turn the pile, we're gonna lose a lot of heat. And if you don't have a large pile with sufficient nitrogen and green material, it may not heat up again and it could freeze solid. And also when you go to turn it, try to be quick. One other point that I want to uh, discuss here is, you know, even with having a warm temperature, it, you know, very often the center of the pile will go cold, but not freeze. It may be 50 degrees Fahrenheit um, while the outside of the pile is frozen. In fact, when the temperature goes down below zero Fahrenheit, I will have the outer one to three inches of my pile freeze, but the interior never really does. It remains active and that's because I'm recharging it all the time. So you can have active decomposition all winter. But just because the outer layer freezes, don't be afraid. When is a winter pile done? Okay, so if we're adding green materials to the pile every week, when is the pile finished? In a normal pile, when the temperature no longer rises when mixed, it's done and you can let it cure for another few weeks and it's, it's good to use. But in a winter pile, it may be difficult to do this without having the pile totally freeze up. So what I do is every week when I go turn it and add green materials, I pay attention to the level of brown. When the sawdust, egg cartons, cardboard is just about gone, I will stop adding to my pile. And then I'll still turn it a couple more times every week or two, uh, but effectively the pile is finished and it's gonna sit there and cure until spring. You will be able to confirm this in spring because finished compost will be black, it'll clump up in your hand, but still be crumbly, and it's gonna smell like freshly dug dirt. That's how you know it's complete and ready to use. Okay, we've gone through the basics of winter compost and the principles, briefly review them now, and then we'll go into the quote unquote video appendix where we document from start to finish two piles. All right, so number one, make your piles bigger, at least 50% bigger. Instead of making a pile that's three to four feet, make it four and a half to six foot diameter. You need it to be big to maintain those warm internal temperatures. Two, gather and accumulate alternative green materials and be aggressive about this. Do not just rely on your own kitchen scraps. Try to get those coffee grounds, pumpkins, whatever you can. Three, recharge that pile when you're turning it. Add a significant amount of green material when you mix, you know, four or five gallons of kitchen scraps is good for me in zone six, I have found. And don't neglect the browns. It, you know, if, if you think you need to add a little bit more of that to keep it balanced, do so. Last, only turn it weekly. At, at, at the most frequently is every seven days. Every time you turn it, you're gonna lose heat and you counteract this by recharging, but even at the lower outside temperatures, the material needs time to decompose. So don't turn it more than every seven to 14 days. Okay, those are the main principles of this video. And if you would like to see them in action, I'm gonna go show you now the two piles I made last winter from start to finish. I'll include all ingredients, the temperature of the pile inside, as well as the ground temperatures, and if you have any questions or anything isn't clear, then go ahead and ask them and I will do my best to answer them for you. All right, so call this the video appendix, pile number one. All right, so pile number one, I started on November 21st and it was 42 degrees outside. My ingredients were a bunch of pumpkins, 10 gallons of kitchen scraps, And then uh, I got a bunch of yard waste from my neighbor across the street, which if you have anyone that cuts all their flowers out, get that because it's wonderful stuff. I also had a whole lot of sawdust uh, to use as my brown. But building this compost pile is like building any other, except now we're gonna use a machete. Um, I've never gone into detail about the pumpkins, but the most effective way to cut it up is to take a machete and go to town. You know, pretend you're, uh, I don't know, Jason or whatever. And, have at it. The pumpkins I really have to stress as being an excellent green source material. They really do break down lightning quick. In fact, any kind of kitchen scrap that is of that fleshy material, it, it's really wonderful stuff. Even in the dead of winter, I, this, the stuff's usually gone within a week and it makes a lot of heat and breaks down a lot of other plant material because it made so much heat. So it's kind of nice. But building this compost pile is like building any other. You make layers and mix as you go, also adding water. You do it this way and uh, you know you can have this thing get hot within a day or two really. When it comes to the yard waste type stuff, it's a good idea to chop that up with a pair of shears. You can dice it up really fine if you want, it'll break down faster, but really the main thing is to get rid of any branching that may be present on the plants. Also, 
if you have uh, weed seeds on your stuff, as long as you get a really hot pile, it, it's going to be fine. As long as your temperature gets above 120 for a week or so, you'll, you'll be perfectly okay. It'll kill everything. In my experience, I, I never really have any weed seeds uh, germinated in my compost. So take that for what it is worth. I've struggled with how much um, footage to show of pile construction because honestly, it takes me more than an hour to build a pile like this. I'm obviously not going to show you all of that, and I've documented how to build a compost pile in my original compost video, but the better job you do getting everything mixed up and moist, the faster everything's going to break down. And try to balance your pile by volume or weight, 50-50 uh, green to brown, and you should be fine. That's what I do. I know a lot of references say, oh, go three parts brown to two parts green or, you know, 75% brown. You know, figure out what works for you. As long as you keep it aerated, it should be okay. If you start to notice uh, like kind of a whitish uh, bacteria in there or a whitish substance, that might indicate that you have too much green, but that's easy to adjust. All right, so eight days later, I like watching the temperature difference from the ground to the pile. You just know how hot it is inside. Um, it's kind of fun just to see that. You might notice that I'm using a infrared temperature thermometer to take all my readings because that's all I had. Uh, the temperature inside the pile is probably much hotter than 104, to be honest with you. Um, because as soon as you flip that pile, the temperature instantly drops. I do have a proper compost thermometer nowadays. It's really nice. Um, you can get it for like $25. I'll put a link in the description. But uh, I bought a beefy one for $25, which I would suggest you get a beefy one, a strong one. Because when you push the thermometer into the pile, it gets hung up sometimes. And I could see where a really thin one might get bent or damaged. But I scored some more pumpkins from some more neighbors. And I'm adding them in here along with some kitchen scraps and whatnot. And I've noticed a little bit, I was light on brown. So I just gathered up some leaves quick from that had blown into my yard. And threw those in too. Uh, just to keep it a little bit balanced. You know, eight days and it's already looking great. I mean... There's not a ton of green showing. December 9th, 18 days old. Uh, so again, I said pumpkins break down lightning quick. I'm not kidding. You know, there it is. It's 100 degrees still. And, you know, you can't see any pumpkins in here that I didn't put in. But on this day, I added another six pumpkins that I got. And that was pretty much it. Now I want to show back, this is the day I built the pile, 18 days ago. This is the pile today. I mean, you know, you look at the difference, it, it's so decomposed already. And um, I actually never added any other material to this pile. I just turned it, I think, one more time, and that was it. Other than that, it's, it's, the pile is effectively done. So I added these six pumpkins, and this was it. Also, I get asked periodically if I ever cover my piles, and the answer is no, I never do. I leave them exposed to the rain, the snow, everything. Covering a pile in winter would help it stay a little warmer, which would be good, but you may have some surface mold form too, which could be hazardous when you remove the tarp. So, This was the last addition um, after 18 days of construction. And this is just to keep the temperature up and help break down some more of that brown material. And yeah, keep it well mixed and it'll work for you while you're not around. Yeah, this is the pile on 14th December. I didn't even mix it up here. I just let it go. It looked really, really good. Um, you know, this is less than a month and I'm basically, it's not usable yet. Like it's still cooking off in the middle, but you don't need to do anything else to this pile except turn it a couple of times. And this pile actually will sit right there all winter long, curing. Um, mostly frozen solid, but you know, that's okay. I got another pile to build here with those other pumpkins you see. So this is the end of pile one. Now, I feel I should say something here. Pile one broke down so fast because of the material. I had four huge bags of yard waste and like, I don't know how many pumpkins, 25, 30 pumpkins in total. Um, that plus the warmer autumn temperatures or you know early winter temperatures made this pile just go super quick my next pile i'm having even more trouble getting green materials which is how it works in the winter but uh nonetheless i'm going to build it now it's even colder out though so january 3rd right now that temperature is 
28 Fahrenheit. Now these kitchen scraps here in these buckets and my coffee grounds, I actually showed you a second ago. I had them inside the day before just to warm them up so I could have them start at a warmer temperature, which is just a good idea for composting in the winter. So bring your stuff in the night before, you know, and that'll just help it break down better. But again, I don't have nearly as much ingredients as I did when I built pile number one, but you know, you go to war with what you have and that is what I will do. You know, it's a lot of coffee grounds, 10 gallons of kitchen scraps, sawdust, uh, egg cartons are a really nice thing to tear up. And yeah, we're gonna build a pile. You know, jack-o'-lanterns and pumpkins, even if they look rotted, if you think you can get them into your car, like if you're driving down the street and you see a jack-o'-lantern that looks fairly rotted, if you think you can get it into your car without making a mess, then you should do that because jack-o'-lanterns, pumpkins are just wonderful stuff for compost. But again, I'm doing everything I normally do. Mixing, mixing, mixing as I go. The better mix it is, the faster everything's gonna happen. You know, the materials being segregated from themselves, it, it, they're not gonna break down as quick. Don't forget to add water as you go. Adding water in the winter is a little harder because you can't drag a hose out there and I have to run into the house, but I mean, that's okay. Nonetheless, just keep building with all the material you can muster. And again, I stockpile materials for piles. Like I, I plan, okay, I'm done with this pile. I'm gonna start storing my kitchen scraps and I'll wait till I get at least 10 gallons and I'll hit every Starbucks I drive past just to see if I can get some grounds. Sometimes you get really lucky. Sometimes you get skunked. It's just how it goes. So this pile was probably a little bit heavy on the brown with all the sawdust I used, which is perfectly okay. It's really just gonna help insulate everything better. Um, you know, it'll balance out with the less green density, but the main thing is just build your pile as large as you can, as long as you can still get to the middle and you should be good. Okay, so January 6th, outside temperature is well below freezing. Not terrible, but the outside of my pile really isn't even froze. But uh, I just wanted to check the temperature quick on the inside. And on the inside, it's 83 Fahrenheit. 28C. So everything's happening how it should. I did add a, a little bit of kitchen scraps and coffee grounds that I had, but really I just wanted to go see how it was doing because the temperature really hadn't gotten above freezing uh, since I built the pile. I mean, it wasn't too far below freezing temperatures, but anyways. Uh, January 8th, first real snowfall, and I saw the snow had melted on my pile, which made me think, hey, let's go have a look and see what's going on. Temperature is not terribly below freezing. 18 Fahrenheit's not too much, but it's still cold. But you turn that pile and see the steam, it makes you feel happy. And inside the pile, it was warm. You know, that's the thing. I've never been able to really hit massive temperatures um, in the winter of like 140 or 150 like I can in the summer or spring. But I keep an active pile all through extreme cold temperatures. And you can do it too, I believe. Uh, if you're in the worst part of, uh, the coldest parts of Dakota and Canada, Minnesota, I mean, I, you might freeze up there. I, I don't know, I don't live there. But if nothing else, if you follow my principles, I'm hoping that you would be able to compost longer. So hopefully this can help you out. I, bet, I mean, I know obviously I do not live where it gets 40 below Fahrenheit Celsius. Um, I obviously don't, but trying these principles should help you. Okay, so it's been extremely cold for a while and my pile is, it's not frozen solid. You know, it's 30 degrees Fahrenheit above freezing. So 61 degrees, I'll take it. And again, I just keep adding material. Every time you add green material, you're doing two things. One, you're adding fuel to the fire, and two, you are making your pile a little bit bigger, a little bit better insulated. And we're gonna see some extreme cold temperatures for where I live here coming up. Um, th this was like the coldest week of the year. It was single digits at night, you know, multiple nights. And this pile is just sitting out there doing whatever it's doing on the middle and the inside. And by the time I got out there, the temperature went up to 18 Fahrenheit. You can see how frozen the top of the pile is, but it's not totally solid. You know, it's, there's still activity inside generating enough heat to prevent total freeze up. And it's still 50 degrees, uh, maybe, okay, up to 60. And that's, again, with my imperfect measurement system. 
So I'll call that a win. You know, we're going to come in here and we are going to just uh, uh, add more green material like we normally do and mix it back up. You really need to be aggressive in trying to get coffee grounds though. It's really like the best way to help keep a hot pile. It just adds a lot of material. Also, I found that going to places that are mostly drive through, you're more likely to get more grounds in one trip. Okay, so by this time I have essentially hit a critical mass where I've got enough insulation and enough green that this baby's getting pretty hot for how cold it's been, which is nice to see. Everything's going to be breaking down at a decent clip here, or a, a decent pace. We just got to keep it going though. If I was to stop adding material to this pile, you know, in a, a few weeks it could freeze up, you know, if I was out there mixing it. If I didn't mix it at all, it'd probably slowly break down in the center still, but I want to have finished compost by spring, not just uh, partially done. Okay, so first week of February, we're still pretty cold. Um, it's generally below freezing all the time, uh, but I happen to score a whole lot of material um, at a Starbucks that was primarily drive through And that combined with all my other stuff, I'm adding a lot of material to the, an already hot pile, which this is a good thing. But, you know, I had, I generated a bunch of sawdust, egg cartons, and then here I've got like nine bags of coffee grounds, like a lot of coffee grounds and another five gallons of kitchen scraps. So we'll make good use of this, and this will effectively increase the pile size probably by 20% or more. I, I don't really know exactly how much, but you know this essentially means I have a large enough pile that it could withstand almost any temperature, I think. Uh, well, not almost any temperature, but a lot. I was noticing I was starting, a lot of my sawdust had broken down, so I'm adding brown material here. More sawdust, paper bag, egg cartons. I'm just adding that stuff because I have it and it doesn't hurt anything. It's just going to help insulate the pile and it's, it is necessary to help keep the pile somewhat balanced. You know, we're not trying to get a pile finished right here and then start another one in a week. Um, it's cold enough right now that I just want to keep adding to this pile because adding kitchen scraps to this pile, they're still going to break down very quickly. Kitchen scraps break down fast. So even if you add them when you think your pile is mostly done, they're not going to last very long in the pile. They're going to decompose quickly, so it's, it's really not a big deal. We're starting to reach the end of winter for me here, which is always a nice feeling. You know, nonetheless, we still got some snow and we've got a pretty hot pile. I mean, you can see here, you, you really, as I turn my pile, you won't be able to really see much kitchen scraps here unless, you know, ones that I just added. They, they just break down pretty darn quick. Yeah, this method and these principles will allow you to keep on composting all winter long without having to just throw your stuff on top of a frozen pile. Kind of neat, you can see the snow melting here in real time. A sped up video. Okay, end of February. Starting to warm up just a hair and Pile still cooking off. I'm just curing it here. I'm not adding in any material. You want to keep turning your piles because that's the curing process and it's necessary to actually finish the pile and get it into that nice uh, crumbly yet clumping consistency. So just keep mixing your pile every week or two, uh, even if you're not going to add anything. Uh, you can see now the outside temperature is 50, so we get a nice warm little late winter day. But my pile is going strong still. And yep, we're still at 100. I haven't added any material in a couple weeks. So, and again, this pile is pretty large. It's, a, it's just a large hemispherical mound that's probably six foot diameter. It can be kind of deceiving because I'm actually on a slope when I'm doing all this, but yeah, it, it is a fairly large pile. But nonetheless, we just keep right on uh, composting away. We got a late winter snow and all the snow had no problem melting off my pile though. So that's always a good sign that I'm doing something right. You know, everything's still cooking off. Not as hot as it was, but that's okay. I threw another five gallons of kitchen scraps in because I had it. 
as I said, kitchen scraps break down quickly, so it's not a problem to keep adding them, you know, periodically. I have to stress, do not worry about having your pile go out of balance a little bit. If you think it's getting a little too green, it's, it's going to be okay. It's still going to break down. You can always add more browns later. You know, the main thing is to keep your pile going and keep composting. Don't throw this stuff away. Use it. So the temperature rose to 84 Fahrenheit. That's probably more of a function of the outside temperature than the little bit of kitchen scraps I added. But uh, um, my piles are basically done now. It's the end of March. Yes, it's 20 or 42 Fahrenheit there. And the pile's still cooking off and still warm. But effectively, this pile is done. At this point, I essentially combined this pile with my pile number one. And I did that because I built a new pile on this day. So this is the result of both of my winter compost piles. Okay, so my pile is effectively done at this point. It is April 4th and the center temperature of the pile really is not rising much above the ambient. Um, this is obviously both piles combined, but yeah, it's basically done. So this is the result of two winter compost piles over about six months. If you've made it this far in the video to the end, thank you very much. I really do appreciate that, and I hope you've learned something. Also, please let me know in the comments if you actually made it to the end of this video. I'd love to hear that. As always, if you have any questions whatsoever, please ask them in the comments, and I will do my best to answer them. But, uh, alright, you guys all have a good one, and good luck scoring some pumpkins and coffee grounds. Bye.